Hello city builders, this is Hubbub. Welcome back to Luvo Springs on the Azure Gulf map in the Sunset Harbor DLC. Last entry, I was really focused on getting infrastructure right over here. Uh, the previous entry, we worked on the key wall. And then last entry, we worked on this highway. And I left it with the realization that I still hadn't completed this trumpet over here and I have to say I get giddy when I can do something somewhat well in this game I am NOT an interchange builder I've been practicing trumpets in this in this um, in this city there's a couple over on the other side of the map so hopefully you saw this you stuck around for the time-lapse and you saw this build I really fussed around over here trying to figure out how to do this right but I'm kind of happy with how this turned out. I knew I didn't want it to be, it couldn't be like a 90 degree trumpet because we're working through a curve here. So I'm pretty happy with how the angles came out. I think these curves, whoops. I think these curves are quite eloquent, elegant. Uh, and then I love using the sloping tool in, although that looks a little bit weird. I don't know why I missed that something looks weird here no it doesn't because this is sloping down and that's sloping that way uh and there's a little hill here that it's going over so i just love using the sloping tool to even everything out you can see there's a teeny bit of glitching going on here but i think i've sorted out most of it this is i think a stunning drive if you're coming in to nouveau springs to visit this what will be this tourist strip along the way here, you can't help but want to add another week to your vacation to visit the main uh, downtown drag over here, which actually is not gonna be the main drag anymore because we're gonna be adding a whole lot in here, in this section of town. So, but, um, you know, when you have level terrain and you can get your lines right that sloping tool is the coolest i think the coolest part of the move it mod because this is just the most gorgeous ride i think now uh you know i did a lot of thinking i've i gotta see how this develops because I don't know if I want cargo traffic even coming through here. The whole point of diverting this highway under the mountain in this tunnel was to make this a total tourist zone. On the flip side, I'm going to make heavy use of monorail and other mass transit in here. And so there shouldn't be too much passenger traffic on this road. So what's the point of having this road if I ban cargo? Um, so I'm just going to leave that as a outstanding question not to deal with until a later date. Today, I want to unveil a little bit more of my evil plan. As I've mentioned before, there are two cities that have been primary sources of inspiration for me with this build. One of them is the Kai Tak Airport Peninsula in Hong Kong. This was originally the major airport and later the international airport in Hong Kong from 1925 through 1997 when the British left. What kind of inspired me or led me to this particular feature was this redevelopment project rendering that I came across on the internet, Kai Tak 2.0. I'm not sure to what extent this project actually has come to complete fruition, but as you can see, they've redeveloped this island as a major hub for cruise ships. There's a marina in the space in between the island, which is functioning as a breakwater and the mainland of Hong Kong. So that's going to be the focus of this episode is building in this land bridge that my cruise harbors are going to land at or that my cruise, cruise ships are going to dock at. And, um, the evil part of the evil plan is I'm gonna I'm gonna hack the heck out of this build. Uh, I'm gonna make a bunch of this into a park so that anybody coming off those cruise ships is gonna have to cross from that land bridge across some pedestrian bridges to get over here to get on the mass transit and visit things. 
And they're going to have to pay to walk across that pedestrian bridge. Sorry, folks, but you got to figure out how to make this budget work. Um, that's the overall plan here. Uh, but I just, right now, I just love marveling at how beautiful this key wall is. It's really the perfect key wall, I think, for what I'm trying to do here. Uh, so, and ultimately, I'll have this land bridge in here, and the key wall will have some harbor assets. We'll do some marinas in here. It's just going to be absolutely gorgeous. And I think one of the things that I've already decided is, in terms of spacing, we have this lighthouse on this promontory here. I really think I want the lighthouse to kind of line up with that land bridge. So uh, now the lighthouse might lose some of its efficacy if I have a land bridge here, but um, now I'm not going to attach it to that. That's not where it's going to tie in. It's going to tie in over here. Um, but I think that's how I want the spacing to go. So let's get going with this. Let's hope I don't flood out anything. Um, I need to figure out the most efficient way to raise. So I need to raise an island. I need to put a road network or a key wall on that island so that I can get, can then square it off and have it look like a nice rectangular peninsula. So it makes total sense that someone, if they wanted, could just raise the land up and then lay in a key. I was a little bit concerned about my ability to eyeball precisely, so I, I'm setting up the road network here basically to just give myself a skeleton or a framework that I'm going to raise the land up in and then I'm going to delete those roads before I put in the key. So in this next phase, all I'm going to do is just level up the seabed so that it's the same height as the, the mainland, and then we'll move on to installing the key. Alright, so after setting up those bridges to create kind of a skeleton framework, I've been able to build the land up. It's nice and level. I have a pretty decent shape that I want to follow for this peninsula. The next step now involves putting in the key walls. This is a little bit tricky because on the end where I want to put in the land bridge, I spend a little bit of time trying to figure out exactly whether I want this to be a nice sloping curve or a nice 90 degree angle curve. And consequently, for some bizarre reason, I end up with the rest of the key wall being slightly askew. So I have to go back and do a little bit of repair work, but generally speaking, this leads to a positive, nice looking outcome.
Hello city builders. So in this last final time lapse, now that we have laid out the basic contours of this this peninsula, I want to come back in and work on some significant infrastructure details. So I need to plop in the cruise ship harbors. I need to put in a road network layout. I need to start thinking about how I'm going to extend these pedestrian bridges across the protected water space between the peninsula and the mainland. Um, I also want to start working on mass transit on the mainland. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll come back in game at the end of this time lapse. All right, so welcome back City Builders. Um, I wanted to come back in game and just review a few things. That last time lapse was a bit lengthy, um, but uh, we're starting to see this take shape. I'm not gonna say that this is a rendition of the Kai Tak Peninsula because obviously the scale is not the same. It's a totally different build and project, um, but definitely an inspiration for this build. But I'm really happy with how this turned out. I like that I extended this this uh, the key out a little bit here. That's mostly because I'm going to put the space elevator in here, so this these dimensions are drawn to mean to uh, provide space for the space elevator. But I think it has a more appealing appearance like this than it did. Uh, when it was just this long block. There's something about the symmetry involved, uh, but also the irregularity of the shape in the middle here. Um, let's see. Now, you can see I've got the two harbors in already, and I had to do a little bit of weird stuff with the road network to get um, this space constructed the way I wanted. Uh, and then the other thing that I don't have too much control over I haven't figured out how to media, how to fix this is you can see we have some glitching here where I've transitioned from that really cool uh, asset from the workshop to a baseline vanilla key wall. The reason is that part of the game plan here is I'm going to be forcing Sims to walk across these park bridges in order to generate revenue to pay for all of this because um, there's going to be some significant unique buildings put in here lots of uh costly assets that i'm going to drop in to this district and so i want to be able to recoup some of that that revenue well here's the problem um this as you may recall this key wall is actually designed as a pedestrian pathway so 
if I um, <laughs> if I if I have my space elevator here and I have this connected with the the custom asset from the workshop, Sims are just going to walk along that pedestrian path to get over to this side of the city. So uh, I had to do a little bit of of uh, modification here, and so I've got some glitching where this Roman masonry is angled out next to the, uh, the the vanilla key wall okay but I like how this has turned out uh, I don't know how completely comfortable I am obscuring the lighthouse like this I'm not sure you know from a distance ships in the sea lane probably can still see it just fine but if I'm going to be realistic this is a maybe a slightly odd placement here now the same by the same token though I'm gonna put in a marina in here at some point, and so that lighthouse is still theoretically providing guidance for ships, smaller vessels, uh, sailboats, yachts, whatnot, coming in past the breakwater to dock in the marina. So maybe I'm worrying a little bit too much there. Let's see, and then as you can see, I've started building out the mass transit infrastructure as well. Found this custom asset for the famous Dubai station um, that I wanna use in this district. I'm putting in two of these. The general game plan is that in the middle here, so this actually is gonna be a wonderful open central plaza park and then on either side here will be dense residential most likely some offices some commercial but you could see my rico um then along the key wall also i'll have a, a bunch of prop not props um plopped dense residential buildings in here to form a really tight skyline uh, so there's really three cities that are in that are influencing or informing my thinking about this. Uh, I keep thinking about Lower Manhattan and how the towers in Lower Manhattan lean, cre creep right up to the edge of the the landmass, um, and then obviously to a certain extent that's inspired by Dubai. There is a famous stretch of road in Dubai, really highway where you have towers on one side of the highway, towers on the other side of the highway. Uh, I really wanted to try to put the monorail stations on this this expressway, but I was having a really hard time figuring out how I was going to get pedestrian traffic off the freeway. Um, so, you know, in a Dubai, that monorail station is to the side of the highway. It's not actually on the highway, but since I have my monorail on the highway here, it might have been cool, but I just couldn't quite figure out how to make it work. I'm I'm really actually pretty happy with how the bridge, the ray elevated highway here looks. It's pretty cool. Um, now, obviously, some of this view will be obscured as we put skyscrapers in here, but then those skyscrapers become their own their own view. So, you may notice also that I have a national highway here. Pedestrians cannot walk on national highways and then uh, toll road and that's meant so i have to have a way to get service vehicles onto this peninsula in order just in case you know there might be a fire uh there might be dead people i have to have a way to get services out onto this peninsula uh, but i also don't want sims to be able to transit through here so I don't know that this was 100% necessary because I could just ban passenger vehicles on that stretch of road, which I probably will anyways, um, but this provides a second layer of insurance to make sure that Sims have to use these pedestrian bridges. Um, and I think that's, that's I think that's about it for what we're looking at. Next, the next entry, the big, big deal that I need to focus on is building out my road network. Uh, I don't really want to start plopping until I start zoning because, and at some point in time, I'm going to turn these on. Those are, I think, 3,200 bucks a week. No, 16, yeah, well, between the two of them, 3,200 simoleons a week. Uh, and I need to have the infrastructure in place so that Sims can get off of those ships 
make their way over to the shore and there's nothing here for them to visit at the moment and I don't have the lines set up either. So um, this is gonna be a sequential build. Next step will be putting in the road network. I uh, wanna thank you all again one more time for following along with this. I hope it hasn't been too tedious, but I also hope that by taking it one stage at a time, it creates kind of a, a narrative building effect and that watching each part of this build be executed is in some way entertaining and useful for those of you who are watching. So thanks again so much for for subscribing. And okay, so that brings this entry to an end. I very much want to thank all of you for viewing and especially those subscribers who are following this channel. I really appreciate all 52 of you. Thank you so much. Um, I love this game. I enjoy playing this game. I'm not perfect at this game, but I want to share what I'm doing with other City Skylines players. So thanks again so much for following. This is Hubbub signing off.